I got a question from someone about what to look for in a husband. So I'm just going to get right into it. The most obvious thing, the first thing, the person that asked this question probably already knows this, but for the sake of those who don't know this, the first thing you need to look for in a husband, if you're a Christian yourself, is make sure he's a Christian husband. You know, in 2 Corinthians six fourteen through 16, it talks about how we don't need to be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. So if a Christian woman marries a man who isn't saved, then most likely it's not going to be a good marriage. For them to get along, she's going to have to compromise everything she believes. She's going to have to go to certain places she normally wouldn't go to. I know of married couples that go to bars together. I've heard of them going to strip clubs together. I've heard of them going to parties where wicked stuff's going on together, like doing drug use and drinking I mean, that's what lost people do is a lot of stuff that they shouldn't do. You're going to have to compromise what you watch on TV or have in your house. You can get along, but you would have to give in to a lot of wicked stuff sometimes. And I know there's exceptions where maybe a lost person's not involved in all that stuff, obviously. But a lot of times, if you're going to be married to a lost person, you're going to be compromising a lot of things. The model husband... The model man in the Bible is the Lord Jesus Christ. The pattern for a man to go by is the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's who we will get our ideas from about what a good husband should be like or what type of hus husband should you look for. And obviously, you're not going to find a man as good as Jesus Christ because he's sinless. But you want to you wanna start out going in the right direction and choose a Christian man to marry. And number two, not just a Christian man, but a Christian man who is separate, has some separation going on, separate from sinners. In Hebrews 7, 26, talking about Jesus, it said, For such an high priest became us who was homely, holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. Jesus Christ was separate from sinners. And obviously, you're not going to find a sinless man like him Jesus Christ ate with publicans and sinners, but he never sinned. He never participated in their sinful activities. He never made it seem like their sin was okay. He was separate. So you can't find a sinless man to marry, but you can find a man that wants to be sinless, a man that strives to be as good as he can be. There are a lot of Christian men who just act like everybody else. They cuss, they drink, they tell dirty jokes, they flirt with every woman that walks by, they watch filthy stuff on TV, they listen to filthy music. I mean, you want a Christian man who's separate from that sinful lifestyle because living with a worldly, worldly Christian man could be just as bad as living with a lost man. I mean, they act pretty much the same. Paul shows us that there are some Christians you shouldn't company with. And obviously, you shouldn't marry them. He says in 1 Corinthians 5.11, But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, or covetous, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or extortioner, with such an one know not to eat. So you shouldn't even company with a Christian who does all that stuff. Because, I mean, they're just going to drag you down. It would be like Solomon. He married all those strange wives, and they turned away his heart from the Lord. That can happen to you. So make sure the man that you're looking for, you're looking for a man with a pure lifestyle. You know, back in Genesis 24, when Abraham's servant was looking for a bride for Isaac, he found the perfect one. And notice the description in Genesis 24, 16. It says, And the damsel was very fair to look upon, a virgin, neither had any man known her. So this woman was a virgin. She had a pure lifestyle. Now you might not want to you you might not be able to find a virgin today in this day we're living in. You may not be able to find a virgin to marry. That's just how it is. 
but you better find someone who is living a sexually pure lifestyle presently. Maybe they didn't have one previously, but do they have one presently? Now, if you can find a virgin, that's great, but you may not be able to in 2021. Look for a man who lives godly with a pure lifestyle, not a Pharisee, not a stick in the mud, not uh, with a holier-than-thou attitude, someone who lives godly and humbly. And the next thing, this is a big one. When you're looking for a husband, you need to find one that's willing to work. Our model man, our model groom, our pattern, our example is a worker. The Lord Jesus Christ is a worker. He provides for his bride. He's got a roof to go over your head. You need to find a man that's going to put a roof over your head. In John 14, 2 through 3, Jesus said, In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. He takes care of his bride. He's going to put a roof over our head. He said that where I am, there you may be also. He wants to be around us. He doesn't want to stay gone all the time. He's a working husband, but he's there for the bride. This is a big one. A working man. There are a lot of deadbeats out there. I mean, you want a husband that's going to go out and work to provide for the family. Even when he's sick. Even when he hates his life. Hates his co-workers. His supervisor. Even if he has to work an ugly shift and get up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Leave when it's dark and come back when it's dark. There are some things you have to do to provide. And a good portion of men aren't man enough to even work a regular job. They will do everything in the world to keep from having to go to work. They will talk about big plans they have to come into money. They will always have a get-rich-quick rich scheme. They will always have these big future plans that never come to pass. But they never actually get up and go to work. There's now hiring signs everywhere. Please, this is a big one. Get a man that's going to go to work. What you want is a man that is presently going to work week after week. And then that's, what's, that's what you have to do. You got to get up, go to work, and then you do it again the next day. And then you do it again the next day. You don't stop when you get the car paid off. You don't just stop because the rent's paid for this month. Because you just use, lose the apartment or house next month. That's what, you, what I see a lot. I see uh, people, they'll go to work and then pay the rent. And they play house for a couple months. And then they're back on the street. So you work... And you work, and you work, until you die or retire. You need a man who is a consistent worker. It says in Second Thessalonians 3.10, For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. Uh, it's a big thing. Second Thessalonians 3.11, For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busy buddies. 1 Thessalonians 4.11, he says that you study to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. This is a big thing. I mean, if a man isn't going to go to work, really, he's not acting like a, a Christian. It says in 1 Timothy 5.8, But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. That means he's worse off than an unbeliever, a lost person. I mean, you got lost people that, are, that got the decency and enough character to go out and provide for their own family. So it's a big thing. You don't just want to marry somebody that's not going to provide for you and your family. The next thing is you need to look for a man that's put away childish things. Something about Jesus Christ is that he is a real man. In 1 Timothy 2, 5, it says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. You didn't see Jesus doing all this childish stuff. Uh, you want a man and not a man who acts like a child. 
in first corinthians thirteen eleven, paul said when i was a child i spake as a child i understood as a child i thought as a child but when i became a man i put away childish things men today can be very childish the person who sent me this question is only 22 years old uh, a woman that's 22 years old asking a very good question what to look for in a husband so the males in her age range are usually no different than a 15-year-old. I mean, I work with a lot of different young men that's that age at my job between the ages of 19 and 24. They are very, very childish. They're very soft. They're very lazy. But every now and then you find a good one. So they are out there. Every now and then I find one that's tough and they can come in and they work like a man and they're there every day and they're there on time. So they are out there. Sometimes I'll even get one that works better than the older men. But when you look for a husband, you want a man that's put away childish things. And I'm going to offend a lot of people when I say this, but I don't mean to. But it's like this. You need to ditch the video games. You need to find somebody that's ditched the video games. And I'm not saying all video games are a sin or that it's wrong to play video games. But my opinion is... The person asked me, it's my opinion. When a man has a choice between playing a video game or doing with his wife what married couples do at night and he chooses the video game over that, that's unnatural affection. That's just weird to me. I mean, is he a man or is he a child that's yet to hit puberty? I mean, he needs to put away the childish things, all this childish stuff that they got going on like every time they see an attractive woman they have to yell out she's so hot h-o-t-t -T, she's so hot i mean they even i've even heard grown men yell that in front of their wife they're gonna yell that a woman another woman maybe walking down the street or on tv they're gonna yell she's so hot in front of their wife that's childish are you a child do you have a brain is it on layaway? When God was giving out brains, did you think he said reigns and just stayed in that day? I mean, do you want a guy that's going to comment on every single woman that walks by? Every single woman he saw on the TV? The kid's teacher? His female co-workers? His secretary? When he constantly says that other women are so hot, or constantly watching them on TikTok, that's childish. He needs to put away childish things. You never, ever want to go around saying other people are hot in front of your spouse. I mean, if he's got posters of celebrities and models that are half naked all over his room, you know, I'd look somewhere else. That's childish, and it's stupid. And if he just gets mad about everything, that's childish and stupid. If he's just mad about everything. Paul said, when I became a man, I put away childish things. I mean, how do you even have time to play a video game if you're a working man with kids and a job and you're working for the Lord? Now, maybe you do. I'm not trying to judge people that do that because not all games are wrong. I don't think it's a sin to play a video game. It's just hard for me to see how you have time to do that for so much when you got all these other responsibilities that you should be doing. I mean, some, some men will stay up all night playing video games while their wife is asleep and then they'll sleep, they'll sleep in all day while she's awake. That's not good for a marriage. Or this other childish thing. Instead of spending time with their family, with their wife and their kids, they're constantly hanging out with the boys. So you got this good-looking wife at home, and yet you want to go hang out with the boys. That's childish. Do you guys have a treehouse too? Are you drinking high C and Kool-Aid Squeeze-Its out there? I mean, it's just always been weird to me that a man would rather hang out with a bunch of sweaty men than his own wife. I'm not saying it's wrong to have friends. It's just childish to go hang out with your friends and act like you're the Goonies or the Rugrats or them kids on that show with Alfalfa and Buckwheat and all that. Another thing, watch out for a man that wants these bachelor parties this one guy asked me one time if i had a bachelor party before i got married i said 
Absolutely not. And he looked at me like I was some type of alien or something. He couldn't understand why I thought that having a bachelor party is wrong. Well, what goes on at a bachelor party? I mean, I've never been to a bachelor party, but from what I hear, it's drinking and looking at strippers. And I guess you could just have a party without all that stuff and it would be okay. But from what I hear, what's going on at a, at a bachelor party is sinful stuff. A man who wants to have a party with beer and a naked woman, when, when he's about to get married, he's being very childish. Is he a child? If he isn't satisfied with being able to see just your body after you get married, then he probably won't be satisfied with just your body after you do get married. If he can't contain himself a week before you're married to where he can't stop looking at naked women that he's not ever even going to see ever again, I doubt getting married a week later is going to change that appetite he's got going on. You see, adultery starts in the heart. You know, a lot of people say, I don't care if he look, it looks as long as he don't touch. There's never been a more stupid statement than that. You know, it starts with a look. It starts with thoughts. And Jesus said in Matthew 5, 28, But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust out there after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. He's going to commit adultery on you in his heart before he does it in action. So put away the childish things. Be willing to work. He needs to be a believer, and he needs to act like a believer. Next thing, you need to figure out how is this person going to speak to you? How is this man going to speak to you? You see, does the Lord Jesus Christ speak to his bride in wrath? Does he pour out his wrath on his bride? It says in 1 Thessalonians 1.10, And to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. It says in Romans 5, 9, Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. You see, Jesus does not pour out his wrath on the bride. He actually took the wrath from us. The Lord isn't bringing the wrath on us. And it says in Ephesians 4, 31 through 42, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. So notice wrath, anger, clamor, and bitterness. Is, is he communicating to you with wrath, anger, clamor, and bitterness? Is there a bunch of clamoring going on when you guys are together? It says in Colossians 3, 18 through 19, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, as it is fit in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives, and be not bitter against them. Husbands tend to get bitter towards their wife. They tend to get hateful and mean. I, I've seen a lot of husbands get hateful and mean and short with their wives for no reason. And you won't be able to tell if he's going to be like this right off, probably, but in a in a few months or of being around him when the newness wears off, when you're no longer new to him anymore, he'll start to show you a little bit of his true colors and how he's going to regularly talk to you. If he's constantly being hateful and screaming and yelling and running his smart mouth or, or being verbally abusive, then don't marry somebody like that. Because, I mean, if he's doing that before you're married, it's going to amp up times 10 after you're married if he doesn't uh, i mean if he if he doesn't give you compliments i mean i mean that's not a big thing but maybe he doesn't give compliments but maybe he's downing your appearance i mean you you ought to compliment your wife but that's not just a huge thing to look for because a lot of that can be fake but i mean if if he's downing your appearance and calling you names before you're even married, I would run the other way. Because when you grow old together, you don't look prettier as you get older, usually. I mean, your looks 
is one of the first things to go, probably. You, I mean, the older you get, you're going to get wrinkled up. You're going to start to sag and bag. And if he's already downing your looks while you're young, what's he going to say to you when you get older? You don't want to marry someone that isn't going to uh, talk to you the way you ought to be talked to. You don't want to marry someone that's going to call you fat and ugly and tells you how much they hate your appearance. If he's always speaking to you in anger and wrath, I just go ahead and stop dating him. That's not how Jesus Christ treats his bride. Now, I believe a woman can bring on this wrath and anger and clamor and bitterness out of even the best man. If you're constantly downing him and nagging him and talking down to him and never complimenting him, then you kind of bring out this that, that side of a, a man. With, and you're going to get those type of reactions. But you don't want to marry somebody that's doing all this stuff for no reason whatsoever. If he's just a jo jo jerk no matter what, <clears throat> you might want to just look somewhere else. The next thing. Well, you need to find someone that loves you enough to die for you. And I mean, you can't tell this right off. You, I mean, you can tell when somebody loves you when they don't love you. But the Lord Jesus Christ is the model husband, and he died for his bride. Just like Adam had a deep sleep come on him to get his bride. So that's the pattern, that's the, the model. In Ephesians five twenty three through 25, it says, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he's the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church, his bride, and gave himself for it. See, the church is the body of Christ. The body of Christ is made up of all born-again believers, and we are the bride of Christ. And he gave himself for his bride. A woman naturally wants a man that loves her as much as Jesus Christ loved the church, loved, loving them enough to die for them. Jesus Christ is the perfect man. You can know what to look for in a mate by looking at how Jesus Christ is. You can learn how to treat your husband treat your wife by looking at how Jesus Christ treats the bride. Now, you can't come close to Jesus Christ, but Jesus gives us that pattern. He gives us that example, that model to go by. If, he, if a man loves himself more than anything and everything, you might want to run the other way. If he loves himself enough to die for you, then he isn't selfish. Men have a problem with being selfish because they have a problem with being childish and children are selfish. Watch out for a man that always makes everything about himself. The next thing is, look for a man that cares about your spiritual state. It says in Ephesians 5, 25 through 28, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish, so men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Notice that the Lord, it says he sanctifies and cleanses the church with the washing of water by the word. He did that once and for all when you got saved, and he does it through your daily life. The more you're in the Word, the cleaner you're going to be, and he wants you in the Word daily. So he cares about your spiritual state. He cares about how holy you're living. He wants you to be holy because he's holy. So a godly husband will want you to be godly. You want a husband that's not only godly, but also wants you to be godly. He's going to want you to read the Bible with him. He's going to want you to go to church with him. He's going to want you to live a separated life with him. You see, a godly husband knows that if you live for the flesh, then you're going to die quicker. Adam, and, Adam knew Eve was dead meat when she ate the fruit. The Bible even says that Adam wasn't deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Adam knew he had some spiritual sense. You see, God has it fixed where if a man is in the book, 
and close to God, then he's more apt to lead the family than the woman is. If your husband is in the Bible, then you should follow his lead. The problem is that in most homes, the woman is the most godly, and the man is just uh, a regular old deadbeat and doesn't care anything about the Bible, doesn't care anything about spiritual things. I mean, his mind is on work and sports and hunting and fishing and all that stuff. But the man should be in the book so much that his wife couldn't keep up with him if she tried. But that's not the case. Most men know absolutely nothing about the Bible. Most men don't don't even have a Bible that they use or even look at. But the next thing, talk about when you are looking for a husband, if you found a person that you're interested in, a man you're interested in, you need to talk about what their idea of home life should be at some point. Their idea of home life. Now, this is a touchy subject. For people the devil has completely twisted and ruined people's idea of what the home life should be like and what it shouldn't be like in titus 2 3 through 5 it says the aged women likewise that they be in behavior as becometh holiness not false accusers not given to much wine teachers of good things that they may teach the young women to be sober to love their husbands to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. I think a, a couple should talk about how they want the home life to be. Notice that said about the woman being a keeper at home. Does, does this man expect the wife to stay at home, or does he expect you to go out and work a regular job? I know some men that do expect their wife to go out there and work on the job whether it be a factory or at a desk my belief is that the best thing is for the wife to be a keeper at home and that's what the bible says but that doesn't mean she's lazy it doesn't mean she's cut off from society it doesn't mean she is her husband's doormat and she's just a slave that's what the devil wants you to think at the same time i don't believe it's wrong for the man and woman both to work I know that some women just want to work, and that's between them and God and her husband. I mean, I know from experience that life is a hundred times easier when you have a person at home that can take care of so many different things while the man's at work. There's so much stuff that needs to be tended to. I mean, taking the kids back and forth to school, homeschooling, babysitting, insurance stuff, bank stuff grocery stuff, thinking about what people is going to eat for dinner, cleaning, cleaning around the house, and the list goes on and on and on. All the stuff that can be done during that 8 to 12 to 16 hour period when the man's at work. I mean, it's just so much easier when the wife's at home. And I know this from experience. My wife worked a, a job working many hours a week, and now she, for the most part she stays at home. And it's just so much easier. It's easier on me. It's easier on her. It's easier on the kids. Many times uh, when a woman hears the words clean the house or cook dinner, she's immediately offended. Why would it offend you if, you if one of your responsibilities is to clean the house and cook dinner? That's crazy. Staying at home and taking care of your family is a very loving thing to do and a very respectable thing to do. Uh, back when my wife worked, we both got home at the same time. We were both exhausted. Uh, all that stuff that could have been done while I was at work had to all be done when we got home. Sure, you make more money when you have both people working, but is the money really worth it? You see, when you start your marriage, don't get in over your head with all these bills and car payments and house payment and all this other stuff to the point that both people have to work. You see, that's what's going on. People are getting into situations where both people have to work and both people have to work overtime. I work a full-time job. I'm the only source of income. I have a family of four. We make it really easy on the money that I have coming in. And I mean, I just work at a factory. I make regular factory pay. It's, it's hard for me to understand uh, why a woman, this is my opinion, 
My opinion. Don't get offended. It's just my opinion. It's hard for me to understand why a woman would want to get up every day and go work in a factory like a man does and be away from the kids when she has the opportunity to be with the kids. I mean, I've worked in factories pretty much ever since I got out of high school, and it's not really the best environment in the world. Some of them are like literal horror movies. I mean, I've worked in some places that's just it's just horrible. I mean, you you pop and crack. I mean, I worked at a a, a place when I was like 21, 22, 23, 24. Every morning, I'd get out of bed. Every bone in my body would be popping and cracking. I would drive an hour to work. I would work 10 hours without a break. It was over 110 degrees. I would be pouring in sweat. I would have a headache every day from sweating so much. And then drive an hour home, have a couple hours before I had to go to bed, and then do it all over again, six days a week. I mean, it's not a fun thing, and it's hard for me to understand why a person would want to get up and do that. And if you've got the opportunity to stay at home, referring to the woman, why would you want to go out and do that? Why, why would you want to go out and work in these factories and and have a full-time job when you could stay at home with the kids and raise them up and train them up in the way they should go? And I've I've also, to show you that I'm, I'm, I'm balanced on this, I've also done a lot of housekeeping. I mean, when my wife worked, she also worked on the weekends. There was a time when my wife, wife worked seven days a week and I worked five days a week. Not because we needed her, to do that she just wanted to work those two days where i was taking care of the kids and doing the housework i thought to myself i could get used to this i could get used to staying at home every day but the thing is i'm the one that needs to go out and work not your wife i'm not saying that housekeeping's easy don't get me wrong don't get offended it's hard work to be responsible for all that stuff that you got to do at home but i'm telling you that having a full-time job where you have to get up every day and you're tied down to it and you got to get up extremely early in the morning and you're beat up from it and your whole body is popping and cracking from it. It's hard for me to understand why a woman would trade staying at home with the kids with going to a full-time job or even a, a job in an office where you're just beat down with stress that you don't have to have that doesn't have anything to do with taking care of the kids and the family. I just don't understand that. That's my opinion. Don't get offended. If your opinion is completely different, I understand. But a lot of women say, you know, I'm not staying at home and letting my husband tell me what to do. That type of junk's crazy. That's crazy because I don't ever tell my wife what to do. I mean, I don't have to. I mean, that junk doesn't even really come up. I mean, what's there to tell her what to do? She knows what to do. She's a grown woman. Uh, if you get a woman that acts like a Christian and does what they're supposed to do, I mean, you're not going to have to tell them what to do. A lot of women want to be independent and have their own job, their own plans, their own way of life, and don't want a husband telling them what to do. But then they go to work and they have about 10 bosses over them that are men that tell them what to do. I mean, you can't get around it. Anywhere you go, you go, whether it be at home with your dad or at home with a husband, or on the job, you're going to have a man telling you what to do. I can't get around it. I take more orders in life than I give times 1,000. A man tells me what to do every single day. I've got, I got more supervisors than I do co-workers sometimes, I think. I mean, you need to talk about these things with a person before you get married. Talk about their idea of what the work situation should be. Are they wanting you to stay at home or are they wanting you to go to go to work? Talk about what they want to do with the kids if you guys have children. Does this man even want to have kids? Does the woman want to have kids? Do they have an idea of how many kids they want? Do they want to homeschool the kids? Do they want to take them to public school? Do they want to go to private school? Do they want to adopt kids? I mean, you don't want to wait until you get married and have kids and then have a big blowout about what you're going to do with the kids when it comes to, 
their schooling and stuff. Where where do they where does this man want to live? Does he want to stay in your hometown? Is he wanting to move to another state? Uh, how crazy is his mother? Are you going to have a Satan in law? I mean, if the man is a great guy, you might could put up with a Jezebel mother in law, but she could be a thorn in the flesh. You know, the messenger of Satan to buffet you and just ruin your marriage. You know. You know, you want to consider these things. Talk about these things with that person you have an interest in. And one of the things that's on the bottom of the list, in my opinion, is, is he attractive to the eye, to your eye specifically? In Genesis 24, when Abraham's servant is looking for Isaac, a bride, it says she was very fair to look upon. So I think looks should be at the bottom of the list. I mean, you want to be balanced on it. You don't want someone you're just not attracted to at all. Now, someone who you're not attracted to may be attractive to somebody else. If you're not attractive to this certain woman, then that doesn't mean this other woman won't be attracted to you. People's got different tastes. But, I mean, you want to be balanced on it. You, want, you don't want looks to be at the top of your list. But you don't want to just be with somebody you're not attracted to at all when it comes to their looks. Also, when someone's godly, they can bec become attractive to you. For example, the Lord Jesus Christ in his earthly body. As far as he know, he was we as far as we know, he wasn't that good looking physically. In Isaiah fifty three two it says, He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him there is no beauty that we should desire him. So there was no beauty maybe in the face. He wasn't some preppy pretty boy guy. He, I mean, he got rough fishermen like Peter to follow him. I mean, he sat on the ground. He rode in the dirt. He sweated. He worked, all kinds of stuff. He didn't care much about outward appearance, you know. He was more about what was in the heart. But every time he was around a woman, they accepted him. Uh, the woman at the well, Mary Magdalene. The woman that had the spirit of infirmity 18 years. The woman that touched the hem of his garment. You know, he didn't... He didn't have to have great looks to attract people to him. He didn't have much beauty in the face, maybe, according to Isaiah 53. So possibly to most people, he wasn't beautiful to look at. But there was something about him that attracted people to him. And that person could become beautiful to them just because they're attractive on the inside. The same man that attracted all those people lives in you if you're saved. So you could attract a godly wife, a godly husband. Uh, a woman should be attracted to a man that tries to act like the perfect man, the Lord Jesus Christ. And if she's not attracted to that, then maybe the problem is with her and not with you. But these are just some things that I would definitely consider when looking for not just a husband, but you could really take all these things and say what to look for in looking for a spouse. I mean... She needs to be, uh, if you're looking for a wife, she needs to be a believer. She needs to be separate from sinners. She needs to be willing to work. Just because she doesn't work on the job doesn't mean she's not working. She needs to put away childish things. Um, she needs to, you, you need to figure out how she's going to speak to you. Is she going to be contentious, constantly nagging? constantly going on about something that's unnecessary you'll find that out after being around that person and the newness wears off and i, I mean uh is she going to let you be the head if you're living godly and in the book is she going to allow you to, let, to lead the family and make decisions when you need to be the one making the decision the final say does she care about your spiritual state does she uh, is she willing to talk to you and be reasonable about how you want the home life to be? You know, look for these things in a spouse. I hope this answer helped out.